Good morning, boys and girls. It's Father Chris, and it's a great joy to be with you as we continue the journey of Lent. Ms. Rashara sang with you the beautiful words, Jesus, remember me last week. So I'd like you to join me in singing those words, or the words that were spoken by the man who hung next to Jesus on the cross on that first Good Friday. And they're good words for us to say, asking Jesus to remember us when he comes into his kingdom. So join me in singing. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. One more, nice and loud. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And we pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember in the response with your spirit, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Boys and girls, as always, as we enter into worship, especially during the season of Lent, we want to admit that we are sinners. So I invite you to close your eyes. Think about the times this past week when you maybe told lies, had a bad attitude, were disobedient, you didn't share, maybe you said words you're not supposed to, maybe you didn't pray, or you weren't grateful. Just ask Jesus to forgive you. Lord Jesus, you are the beloved Son of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our Savior. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promised to send us the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let the church say, Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, as we continue our journey of Lent, Please bless us. Help us to know what is right and do what is right. With the help of your Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever, let the church say, Amen. Quick question. How many commandments did God give Moses? How many? Five? Seven? Thirty-six? Ten. We're going to hear the story of how that happened. A reading from the book of Exodus. <clears throat> the Lord gave Moses these commandments. I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of Egypt where you were slaves. Do not worship any gods except me. Do not misuse my name. I am the Lord your God. I will punish anyone who misuses my name. Remember that the Sabbath day belongs to me. Respect your father and mother and you will live a long time in the land I am giving you. Do not murder. Be faithful in marriage. Do not steal. Do not tell lies about others. Do not want what belongs to someone else. <clears throat> Do not want anyone else's house or wife or slaves or cattle or donkeys or anything else. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It gives us new life. His teachings last forever, and they give wisdom to ordinary people. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The Lord's instruction is right. It makes our hearts glad. His commands shine bright and they give us light. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. All of his decisions are correct and fair. They are worth more than the finest gold. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Sing with me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. And we make the cross on our forehead, on our lips, and over our heart. Not long before the Jewish festival of Passover, Jesus went to Jerusalem. And there he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves in the temple. He also saw money changers sitting at their table. So he took some rope and he made a whip. Then he chased everyone out of the temple together with their sheep and cattle. He turned over the tables of the money changers. He scattered their coins. Jesus said to the people who were selling doves, get those doves out of here. Don't make my father's house a marketplace. The disciples then remembered what the scripture says. My love for your house burns in me like a fire. The Jewish leaders asked Jesus, what miracles will you work to show us why you have done this? Destroy this temple, Jesus says, and in three days I will build it up again. They replied, it took 46 years to build this temple. What makes you think you can build it in three days? But Jesus was talking about the body as a temple. And when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he told them. Then they believed the scriptures and all the words of Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I have to imagine that there are some rules that you have to follow when you go to school. Whether you're back in the school building or whether you're doing school virtually, there's rules, aren't they? Right? Before you talk, you have to either raise your hand or wave on the screen or something like that. There's a way that you have to hand in your homework, right? whether you have to write with pen or pencil, or you have to submit it you know, with the Google Classroom or something like that. Maybe there's rules about what you have to wear. And these days, rules if you're virtual learning, that you have to have your camera on, right? All sorts of rules at school because they help us all learn. You got rules at home, right? You can't leave your clothes on the ground, right? They have to go in the, in the hamper or in a special spot at your house. I bet you're not allowed to just go in the refrigerator anytime you want and just take juice, right? Only when you ask dad or mom, right? There's probably rules about when you can watch TV or when you can use your tablet, right? Why do your parents have all these rules? Well, they're there to help you, to help you grow in, in, into a good adult, right? Because the reality is, even when you're an adult, you don't get just to do whatever you want. Your moms and dads have rules, how fast they drive, which way they go down the street, right? How they pay for things with, with money, right? They have rules at work, when they have to show up, what they have to wear, what they have to do. All kinds of rules exist at school, at home, for grown-ups at work, and of course, as we hear today, in our life as a Christian, in our life as a people of faith. God gave the Jewish people the Ten Commandments a long time ago, and I hope you, you know the Ten Commandments. If not, there's some good church homework for you to memorize the Ten Commandments, right? And, and, and your mom and dad can print that out for you from the internet, and maybe you can do that. And next time you see me, if you Tell Miss Arlene or Miss Rasharai all Ten Commandments will have a special prize for you, right? And, and, and Jesus in the gospel, he was upset with people because they were not following the commandments. They were being greedy. They wanted, they were selling the doves at the temple for too much money, right? And they were being rude. They were being mean. And Jesus is saying, if you're going to be a, a person of God, you can't live this way. Boys and girls, rules aren't made to make life unfun. They're not made to make us miserable. They're there to help us. Because sometimes in our selfishness, sometimes in our laziness, sometimes in our greed, we mess up. So the rules are there to help us. Whether the rules from your teacher, or from your parents or grandparents, or from the babysitter, or from your coach, or the rules that God himself gives. Welcome them. They're helping you become the person that Jesus wants you to be. And that is a wonderful person. Amen? Amen. Let's turn now to the Lord and bring our prayers. And after each prayer, you're going to say, Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord, I pray thanking you for all the wonderful young people who are worshiping with us today on YouTube. I just ask that you bless them and help them follow your rules so that they can be the awesome young people that you need them to be at home and at school and in our church. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your teachers, your parents, your coaches, all who help you to learn the rules of life and to follow the rules of life. May they be blessed in all they do for you. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, the sick, your friends who are sick, your family members who are sick, your neighbors who are sick, the sick people from St. Raymond's. Uh, Lord, we just beg that you give us all the grace to be healed. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for your, your schools, for those of you who are not back in school yet. We pray that the teachers and the principals and all those making decisions will find ways for you to get back to school, to be with your friends, and to thrive in that environment. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone at St. Raymond's during this Lenten season, that we could be more obedient to God's plan for us. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we pause so in quiet you can offer your own prayers. And boys and girls, I invite you to put your hands up in that position of surrender we've talked about before as together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may God bless you and your families this week, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be sure to download the, the handout. Ask your parents for a list of the Ten Commandments and they can help you memorize them this week and you can talk about what they mean for you as a young person. And then lastly, you know, at church we're giving out the rice bowls, which is a way to save money, save your nickels and your pennies and your quarters, and then help the poor people, children throughout the world who don't have enough food. So even if you don't have one of the actual rice bowls from church, just use a Ziploc baggie or maybe a Tupperware container and start putting those coins in there. And then when you come back to church in a couple weeks, you can bring them with your family and be able to be a blessing for the poor. Thanks so much. Have an awesome, awesome week. I miss seeing you and know that I love you.